this is the information that you need to do your role as an RBT and to pass this exam. Hey, future RBTs, I'm Dom, the BCBA mom, and welcome back to my channel. So today we are diving into one of the most important ABA topics. I know I say that about all of them, but you're really gonna wanna listen to this one, especially if you're trying to pass your RBT exam anytime soon. I will be breaking down task list D using a little bit of the Cooper book, but I'm also going to give you some relatable examples to make it clear. All right, let's get right into it. So if we jump right into the RBT task list, section D, the first section is D1, identify essential components of a behavior reduction plan. Now I know I created a video on how to write a behavior reduction plan. You don't really need that right now. This is the information that you need to do your role as an RBT and to pass this exam. But if you wanna watch that video after this video, I'm sure it'll help you understand what's in the plan or why it's in there a little more. Okay, so throughout my years, I probably have written, I don't know, hundreds of behavior plans. So I'm just gonna go off the top of my head, all of the things that as a BCBA, I need to make sure are in my behavior plans. Now, behavior reduction plans should be individualized. So everything that I'm saying here is not gonna be everything that you find in a behavior plan because some people need more, some people need less. But in any behavior reduction plan, these are some of the components that are a must have. Number one, you need a target behavior and an operational definition. So we know that behavior is everything that you do. Me waving my hand is a behavior. But when we're talking about a behavior reduction plan, we wanna identify the target behaviors. These are the behaviors that we are looking to decrease. So that can look like physical aggression, verbal aggression, elopement, self-injurious behavior, poverty destruction, something that is severe and socially significant that we want to decrease. That is always gonna be in a behavior reduction plan along with the operational definition, which is a clear description of what that behavior looks like. No ambiguity here in this behavior plan. We need to know exactly what that physical aggression or that verbal aggression looks like. Another component of every behavior plan is the function of the behavior. Not only do we list what the behavior is and what it looks like, we wanna know why this behavior is happening. So of course we have to conduct a functional behavior assessment. I created a video on how to conduct a functional behavior assessment. If that is in your wheelhouse and in your skill of competency, go ahead and check out that video. But a must have in any behavior reduction program is the function. We need to know why this behavior is happening or we cannot go any further. Another component that's in every behavior plan is your interventions. We know why the behavior is happening. What are we going to do in order to decrease it? What is our plan of action? This is our playbook. This is how we map out our responses, either proactively or reactively. We need to include some type of data collection procedure, right? We are data driven, we love our data. So in a behavior plan, we need to know how are you tracking this data? Um, what does the graph look like over the last six months or a year? Some form of data collection. Teach me how you want me to track this behavior. That has to be in the plan. And then lastly, there's usually some type of crisis plan if needed. The crisis plan can say something like, if there is a crisis, follow the protocol from your agency, or if there is a crisis, you may want to call 911 or call whatever, it's whatever overarching crisis plan. If this doesn't work, what are you going to do? That is your crisis plan. Now, of course, you can add a lot more to a behavior plan, right? That is just the meat and potatoes. But what else do you want to add to it? Of course, you want to add the, the name, the client's name, their demographic, social history information, their diagnosis, or any psychotropic medications that they're on, or the side effects to those psychotropic medications. Uh, what's the results of the preference assessment? So we know exactly what they're working for. There are a lot of things that you can add in there, but once again, that, that's individualized from person to person, from agency to agency. But as an RBT, if you know where to find the target behavior and operational definition, the function of the behavior, 
the data collection process and the crisis plan, you're okay. And then continue to ask questions about the rest. All right, let's give an example. So let's say we are working with a kid named Jordan and Jordan hits whenever someone tells him no. Like, no, Jordan, you can't eat that. <sighs> Jordan will hit you. The behavior plan would clearly define what hitting looks like. Is it open hand? Is it a closed fist? What is he doing? It'll say the function of this behavior, like access to tangible, whenever he asks for um, an extra soda or whenever he asks for the tablet or whenever he asks for your cell phone and you say no, he engages in hitting behavior, um, that could mean the function of this behavior is access to that tangible. And when you don't give him access, that's what Jordan does. So now that we know this, you also want to include in the behavior plan strategies like providing options or a first then schedule. All right, now let's talk about the functions of behavior. So I know I just slid that in there earlier in the section, but we really need to dive deep into the four major functions of behavior. Now, some, um, some people may use the acronym EATS, okay? So you can remember the four major functions of behavior, which is escape, attention, tangible, and sensory, okay? Just think of, right? Let's talk about the four major functions of behavior. I am raising my hand. I'm raising my hand, this is the behavior. Now I could be raising my hand because I need to get out of here. Like I gotta go to the bathroom, I'm sorry. I am raising my hand to escape this situation. Another example. Same behavior, I'm raising my hand, but this time I'm raising my hand like, pick me, pick me, please pick me. I want your attention, okay? Well, same behavior, I'm raising my hand because I'm actually trying to reach something on the top shelf. Same behavior, but now I'm raising my hand to access a tangible or something that I want that's way up high, okay? Last example, raising my hand, but this time I'm not raising my hand to escape. I'm not raising my hand to get your attention. Pick me. I'm not raising my hand to grab something on the top shelf. I'm just raising my hand uh, because I'm stretching. Uh, and it feels good. Those are the four major functions of behavior. We can't just look at the behavior and say, oh, she's raising her hand. I know exactly why she's doing that. No, there could be many reasons why I'm raising my hand. So we cannot assume we have to conduct a functional behavior assessment to identify why that behavior is occurring. So you can apply this same example to physical aggression. Um, is that person engaging a physical aggression because they are saying, look at me, I want your attention? Are they engaging a physical aggression because they're saying, leave me alone, get away from me? Are they engaging a physical aggression because they want access to something like a tablet? All right, our next section is D3, implement antecedent interventions like motivating operations and discriminative stimulus. Lots of words, let's break it down. So an antecedent intervention is anything you do before the behavior happens to decrease the likelihood of that behavior happening in the first place. So if I know in the past that Jordan hits whenever we see the McDonald's golden arches, anytime we pass by the McDonald's golden arches, he starts hitting because he wants access to McDonald's. What I can do is change the environment before it even happens. I can change the MO, meaning I'm changing the value of the McDonald's or the reinforcer. For example, if I pack the car with all of his favorite snacks, his favorite toys, his favorite playlist, his favorite music, um, and he's not super hungry, he may not engage in that behavior when he sees the McDonald's sign. I can also change the SD which is a signal that McDonald's is available. I can do that by just taking another route. 
we can go a route where he doesn't see the golden arches. Whenever he sees the golden arches, that's an SD to hit and request McDonald's. But if we go down this street and there are no golden arches, then we decrease the likelihood of that happening. So these are both examples of intervening before the behavior happens or an antecedent intervention. My favorite type of interventions, guys, like you have to be proactive. Section D4 and D6, implement differential reinforcement. I feel like I've talked about this before, but let's get into it again. Differential reinforcement is when you are reinforcing some occurrences of behavior, and then you are withholding your reinforcement for inappropriate behavior. So you are providing reinforcement for appropriate behavior, and you're withholding reinforcement for undesired behavior. So there are um, a few different ways that you can do this. DRA, differential reinforcement of alternative behavior. So anything that, so if, if Jordan screams, that is the behavior that we withhold our reinforcement. If Jordan asks, hey, can I have the iPad? Can I have an extra snack? Can we go for a walk? If he uses that communication, we provide lots of reinforcement because that is the alternative behavior we want to see. DRA, differential reinforcement of an alternative behavior. The next one is DRO, differential reinforcement of an other behavior. So if we are tracking physical aggression or hitting for Jordan, anytime Jordan is not engaging in hitting behavior, that's an opportunity to provide reinforcement. So if Jordan is coming and sitting down at the table, thank you, Jordan, for sitting down and joining us. If he's coloring, thank you, Jordan, for coloring with your pencils. I love how you color. If he asks a question, I love that question. Any opportunity you can to provide reinforcement when Jordan is not hitting, that's what you do. That is D-R-O, D-R-I differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior. So if Jordan is hitting, pop, 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 right? We don't wanna reinforce that behavior. We can reinforce a behavior that is incompatible with hitting, meaning he can't do this behavior and hit at the same time. So I can say, hey, Jordan, can you put your hands in your pocket? I cannot put my hands in my pocket and hit at the same time. Hey Jordan, can you sit on your hands? Let's play a game and we both sit on our hands and we rock back and forth. Hey Jordan, can you hold this pillow for me? Hey Jordan, would you like to color with me? Would you like to play with slime or fidget spinners or anything that you can do with your hands and you can't hit at the same time would be considered an incompatible behavior and we do provide reinforcement for that. And then a DRL, that's just differential reinforcement of low occurrences of those behaviors. So let's say Jordan hits 10 times a day and we implemented some antecedent procedures. We went like we have a behavior reduction plan in place and is working a little bit, but not all the way. And now he only hits five times a day. Jordan, bravo. That's an opportunity to provide reinforcement because he hit less today than he did yesterday. So differential reinforcement of low occurrences of behavior. Are we gonna find any and every way to provide reinforcement for the appropriate behavior? Now, usually uh, differential reinforcement and extinction procedure, which is D5, are usually paired together. If you are um, usually in a behavior plan, you'll see a differential reinforcement and an extinction procedure paired together. So the differential reinforcement is that's when we reinforce, extinction is when we withhold our reinforcement. So let's say if Jordan used to hit to get access to the iPad, now Jordan hits and we do not give him access to the iPad and he hits and he hits and we still don't give it to him, we are extinguishing that behavior. But when he communicates, 
any form of communication, pointing, gesturing, picture card, sign language, uh, successive approximation, any type of communication that he wants the iPad and he does it appropriately, then that, that's when we provide that reinforcement of the iPad. So when it comes to extinction procedure, guys, it can get a little tricky because what if Jordan was hitting like boom, 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 and somebody, somebody's really getting hurt. You're really getting beat up. You don't want to continue to carry out an extinction procedure if it's not safe, right? Um, or if it's just not working for the individual. So some Sometimes the extinction procedure can look like the cry it out method. Like if you have a newborn baby, you just let them cry it out and then eventually they'll stop. Yeah, but a baby doesn't have the language to say what they need. And sometimes that's why we are seeing these behaviors from our individuals because they don't have the language to say what they need. So the extinction procedure should be utilized closely and carefully with your BCBA to make sure you are implementing it correctly to make sure it is effective because we don't want it to have an adverse effect, be ineffective or like traumatize our, our, our kiddos or our individuals that we're working with. That's not, that's not what we signed up for. Okay. And it could be your job as the RBT to advocate that to your BCBA and say, Hey, I noticed that you have an extinction procedure listed in the behavior plan. Um, can we talk through this? I don't think it's as effective as you want it to be. All right. And there you have it. All of the major components of a behavior reduction plan and just helping you get through task list D. All right, so for all of my Patreon out there, I'm going to give you a sample uh, behavior plan so that you can identify exactly where these components are, where you would find them and what you would find in there, just for you. If you got anything from this video, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.